Welcome again to the video lecture series in history class 12th. Today we will continue with our discussion about 6th chapter which deals with Bhakti and Sufi traditions from 8th to 18th century. This chapter is divided into 4 subtopics. Those are Bhakti movement in South India that we have already discussed, Bhakti traditions in North India. Islamic traditions in India and Sufism, integration of cults, difference and conflict according to historians and reconstructing histories of religion. So, Bhakti traditions in North India. Bhakti traditions in North India gives insight into decline in the dominance of Brahmanas, Kabir Das, his life, his guru his compositions, his preachings as a source of inspiration to those in search of divine and against orthodox religious and social institutions. Baba Guru Nanak Dev, his teachings, transmission of his teachings, his new religion, relevance of Nanak's and Kabir's teachings in 21st century, Mirabai, Women Bhakti Saint of North India as a challenge to patriarchal norms. When Bhakti traditions were emerging and gaining momentum in the form of Alvars and Nayanars in South India, during the same period in North India, Vishnu and Shiva were worshipped in temples built with the support of rulers. But historians have not found evidence of anything resembling the compositions of the Alvars and Nayanas till the 14th century. Let us discuss about decline in the dominance of the Brahmanas. In North India, several Rajput states emerged. In these Rajput states, Brahmanas occupied important positions. There seems to have been little or no attempt to challenge Brahmanas positions directly. But at the same time, certain religious leaders, namely Nath, Jogis, Siddhas, they were gaining ground outside orthodox Brahmanical fold. Many of these new religious leaders, they belong to artisan groups, including weavers, who were becoming increasingly important and gaining prominence with the development of organized craft production an increasing demand for such production. These new religious leaders, they questioned the authority of the Vedas, preached in common man's language, but in spite of their popularity, they were not in a position to win the support of the ruling class. In such situations, a new element got incorporated and that was the coming of the Turks and establishment of Delhi Sultanate in 13th century. This undermined the power of many of the Rajput states and the Brahmanas who were associated with these Rajput kingdoms. This brought significant changes in the culture and religion. The coming of the Sufis along with Turks was a significant part of these developments. Many poet saints emerged in this new social situation of dialogue and debate with the traditions of Sufis and Yogis as Kabir, Guru Nanak and Mirabai. Let us discuss about Kabir. Kabir Das is perhaps one of the most outstanding poet saint in North India around 14th and 15th century. His life and Guru. Historians have tried to reconstruct his life through a study of compositions attributed to Kabir and through his Hagiographies. Hagiographies means biography of saints written by their followers. So, through his biographies, which at times proved to be very challenging. For example, it is still debated whether Kabir was a Hindu or a Muslim by birth. These debates got reflected in his biographies or hagiographies. Many of these were composed about 200 years after Kabir's death. 
biographies within the Vaishnava tradition suggest that Kabir was born a Hindu but was raised by a poor Muslim weaver Julaha family. Kabir itself is an Arabic word meaning great. These biographies suggest that he was initiated into bhakti by his Guru Ramanand. Historians have pointed out that it is very difficult to establish that Ramanand and Kabir were contemporaries without assigning improbably long lives to either or both. However, the verses attributed to Kabir use the words Guru, Sadguru, but do not mention the name of any specific perceptor or guru. So, tradition linking Ramanand and Kabir cannot be accepted at face value. Kabir's Compositions Kabir's verses have long been compiled in three distinct but overlapping traditions long after his death. First one is Kabir Bijak, preserved by the Kabir Panthis. Kabir Panthis means the path of Kabir in Varanasi and elsewhere in Uttar Pradesh. Second is Kabir Granthavali, which is associated with the Dadu Panthis in Rajasthan. Thirdly, many of his compositions are found in Adi Granth Sahib. His poems have survived in several languages and dialects. Kabir's teachings are source of inspiration to those in search of divine and against orthodox, religious and social institutions. Firstly, Kabir's Ulat Basiya. Ulat Basiya means upside down sayings like fire ranging in the ocean, hint at the difficulties of capturing the nature of the ultimate reality in words and conveys a sense of Kabir's mystical experiences. Secondly, he describes ultimate reality as Allah, Khuda, Hazrat, Peer, Nirakar means formless, Brahma, Atman, etc. from Vedantic traditions and Shabad means sound or Shunya, emptiness from yogic traditions. Thirdly, he believed in one God and was against image worship. In one of his composition, he says, tell me brother, how can there be no one Lord of the world but two? Who led you go astray? God is called by many names, Allah, Ram, Kareem, Keshav, Hari, Hazrat. Distinctions are only words we invented. Fourthly, Kabir was against rituals. He says for Hindus and Muslims, they are both mistaken. Neither can find the only Ram. One kills the goat, the other cow. They waste their lives in disputations. Kabir used the Sufi concept of jikr and ishq, love, to express the Hindu practice of Nam Simran, means remembrance of God's name. He expressed his thoughts in common man's language and is still a source of inspiration for those who believe in humanity, not in being Hindu or Muslim, and are in search for the divine. The dialogue and debate of Vedantic ideas with the tradition of Sufis and Yogis get reflected in the Kabir's philosophy. Let's discuss about Baba Guru Nanak Dev, a Nirgun Bhakti saint. Baba Guru Nanak Dev was born in 1469 in a Hindu merchant family in a village called Nankana Sahib, now in Pakistan. He spent majority of the time among Sufis and Bhaktas since young age and travelled widely. Baba Guru Nanak Dev's teachings Like Kabir, Guru Nanak Dev also advocated Nirgun Bhakti. For him, the Absolute or Rab had no gender or form. Just like Kabir, he also rejected sacrifices, ritual baths, image worship. He rejected the scriptures of both Hindus and Muslims and proposed a simple way to connect to the divine by remembering and repeating the divine name. Transmission of Baba Guru Nanak Dev's Preachings Baba Guru Nanak expresses ideas through hymns called Shabbat in Punjabi, the regional language. He sung his compositions in various ragas while his attendant Mardana played the musical instrument called Rabab. He organized his followers into a community and set up rules of Sangat, that is group worship, 
involving collective recitation. Baba Guru Nanak Dev appointed one of his disciples named Angad as his successor and the perceptor means Guru. Fifth Guru, Guru Arjan Dev compiled Guru Nanak's hymns along with his four successors and other religious poets like Baba Farid, Ramdas and Kabir in the Adi Granth Sahib. These hymns called Gurbani are composed in various languages. In the late 17th century, the 10th perceptor or Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, he included the compositions of the 9th Guru, Guru Tegh Bahadur and this scripture was now called Guru Granth Sahib. New religion. It appears that Baba Guru Nanak did not wish to establish a new religion, though he organized his followers into a community for group worship, that is Sangat, and collective recitation. But after his death, his followers consolidated their own practices and distinguished themselves from both Hindus and Muslims. Guru Govind Singh, he laid the foundation of the Khalsa Panth that is army of the pure and he defined its five symbols. Those are uncut hair, a dagger, a pair of shorts, a comb and a steel bangle. Under him, the community got consolidated into a socio-religious and military force. Relevance of Nanak's and Kabir's teachings in 21st century. Their teachings were simple and practical. Secondly, they both were against caste system. Thirdly, they both believed in humanity and brotherhood. They both were against rituals, sacrifices and image worship. They both believed in one God who is formless. Kabir says, gold may be shaped into rings and bangles. Isn't gold all the same? Distinctions are only words we invented. So there's only one Lord called as Allah, Ram. Kareem, Hari, Hazrat. So their teachings are relevant even today to spread message of love, peace, harmony and brotherhood in the world. So let's discuss about Mirabai, women bhakti saint of North India as a challenge to patriarchal norms. Mirabai is perhaps the best known women poet within the bhakti tradition around 15th, 16th century. Her biographies have been reconstructed primarily from the bhajanas attributed to her which were transmitted orally for centuries. According to her biography, she was a Rajput princess from Medta in Marwar who was married against her wishes to a prince of the Sisodia clan of Mewar, Rajasthan. She defied her husband and did not submit to the traditional role of wife and mother. Her in-laws tried to poison her, but she escaped from the palace, rejected the comforts of palace, wore the white robes of a widow or the saffron robe of the renouncer to live as a wandering saint. In one of her songs, she sings, What can Mewar's ruler do to me? If God is angry, all is lost. But what can the Rana do? As a wandering saint, she composed songs in praise of Krishna, the avatar or incarnation of Vishnu as her lover. These songs are characterized by intense expression of emotions. For example, she sings, I will build a funeral pyre of sandalwood and aloe, light it up by your own hand when I am burned away to cinders. Smear this ash upon your limbs. Let flame be lost in flame. According to some traditions, her guru or perceptor was Redas, a leather worker. This indicates her rejection of the norms of caste. Although Mirabai did not attract a sect or a group of followers, she has been recognized as a source of inspiration for centuries. Her songs continue to be sung by women and men, especially those who are poor and considered low caste in Gujarat and Rajasthan. So, we discussed about decline in the dominance of the Brahmanas, Kabir Das, his life, his guru, his compositions, his preachings as a source of inspiration to those in search of divine 
and against orthodox religious and social institutions. Baba Guru Nanak Dev, his teachings and transmission of his teachings, his new religion, relevance of Nanak's and Kabir's teachings in 21st century. Mirabai, a women bhakti saint of North India as a challenge to patriarchal norms. In our next session, we will discuss about Islamic traditions in India and Sufism. Thank you. Thank you.